Thank you to Wondrium for sponsoring this video. But then you got, I got to deal with their poop every day. Yeah. If someone came up to you and said, hey, I'll be your friend every day, but you have to hold my poop. No. <laughs> <laughs>
That's thunder. You hear that? Ooh. It's hailing. Wow, I'm seeing hail bounce on the ground. I want to get footage of that just a second. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Good thing I took the dog out earlier. Yeah, see? Uh, you got to plan a whole thing now. It would be bad if, say, you were in an apartment on the second floor and you always have to take him out. You can't just let him out the door. you got to take him down. And it's really helpful to have a fenced-in backyard. <coughs> yeah, try not to cough over her mom when she's talking. Okay, I'll try it next you're, time. You're on I'll thin try. ice, buddy. I'll try harder. You're on thin ice. <laughs> yes, I am. Divorce time! Now, I realize all this responsibility mm. oh. is not a big deal to a lot of people, but if you saw the way that my friends and I lived in our 20s, we did dogs a favor by not owning them. In fact, we probably saved the lives of millions of pets. We're basically heroes. Anyway, you get it. Taking care of pets is hard. They take time, they take money, proper care, hoobity boobity, but also, uh, they can be kind of smelly. What, what don't you like about Bentley? He sheds. They're a mess. Sometimes they, they pee on your stuff. You gotta I mean they smell. They're dirty, right? Does that bother you? No. I have a three-year-old and a nine-month-old man, so like the, the, the whole house smells. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it doesn't bother everybody. Different aromas for different aromas, you know what I'm saying? True, you can just bathe them and clean the house more, but that's more responsibility. Oh. What's more likely is you get acclimated to the hair and the smell and you don't even notice it anymore, but your friends do, so they stop coming over. And you don't think it's because of your filthy house, but because of your social ineptitude, leading to loneliness and deep, dark depression until you get more dogs. But I digress. Let's move on to something lighter. They can kill you. Well, a big dog anyway, a normal big dog. Yeah, I don't think Birdie could kill me. Or at least hurting you really badly. <laughs> yeah. Usually dogs aren't like that. And also thinking back when I was little, I was actually just kind of afraid of dogs. And Ada is a little afraid, is afraid of yeah. dogs too, so maybe it's genetic. I like to feel that my fear of snakes is genetic, so that's fair. <laughs> we had a snake for a while too. Jen and I were talking about that the other day. Mm -hmm. She wants to get another one. I heard. I actually wasn't that afraid of our snake. Even though it did bite her once. You're not inspiring me with confidence, but <laughs> there is yeah. one way to, to ensure that I don't come visit. Yeah. <laughs> How does he interact with Ada? Not very well. She's afraid of him because he's right mm -hmm. there whenever she eats. Yeah, and it's just his mouth, his big nose, his teeth. Mm -hmm. It scares her, I think. Of course, it kind of depends on whether it's a big dog or a little dog, how dangerous it could possibly be. But I have met some feisty little dogs in my travels. I believe it was Nietzsche who said, it's not the size of the dog in the fight that matters. Nothing matters. Anywho, in Jake's world, big dogs are too much for Jake. If it's a big dog, then just the chaos of it. My first dog, Dukes of Hazard, was a really big dog. The next dog was a tiny little dog. I like a lap dog. So you can pet it on your lap while you're watching TV and feed it cheese. That's all. The cat, the dog, you feed cheese too? Okay. <laughs> Warning, some dogs are intolerant of cheese and even the ones that aren't, it's best to serve them in moderation. So I'm glad Jake doesn't have a dog. Anyway, in childhood, Matt had a couple of big dogs. I'm not talking about his feet. That's kind of a common expression to refer to your feet as your dogs. There was a yellow lab and a basset hound. Jackson and Fred. They're both kind of terrible dogs. Uh, <laughs> Jackson would often attack me. Oh, wow. He would bite me. They hated each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. They would fight all the time. I was a bit upset. I was watching our parents' dog, Bentley. He ended up killing and burying a rabbit. And I had to dig it up and dispose of it. What? What are you upset about? Uh, the dead rabbit. Why? Well, you know, it wasn't very pleasant um, looking anymore. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that brings up a good thing about dogs. They present a great opportunity to explain death to children. Moving on. What don't I like about dogs? Probably the same thing I don't like about cats, which is picking up their... Poop. The springtime poop pickup. Just springtime? I mean, all I think all time. No, springtime's the worst. You try to stay on the ball for picking up the backyard, and invariably you fail, and things freeze, and you get the big melt mid-March. Melting shirt everywhere. It needs work. Yeah. It needs work. Yeah. So I gotta deal with their poop every day. Someone came up to you and said, hey, I'll be your friend every day, but you have to hold my poop. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, humans have a choice in yeah. a toilet, in a facility, mm -hmm. or even in a hole. So I guess if they, okay, all right, Ada, all right, all right. I'm I... trying to eat them. Sorry, my daughter, a bit of a cannibal. Anyway, one reason my sister is more of a cat person than a dog person is because of one particular feature about dogs. They want you around all the friggin' time. I felt like I wasn't home enough to have a dog. Cats sometimes are okay with being alone. 
when we have places to go that she can't come, making sure that there's care set up. Now ask us if we'd have another one. Would you have another dog? My yes. choice would <laughs> My choice would be no. I want to travel more. Where yeah, he wants to just keep having dogs. You wanna keep having dogs? Well, maybe not right away. Yeah, come on, Dad. Take a break. Live a little. One final reason. They're loud. Of course, not all dogs are loud, but every time someone walks by, it causes this little one to bark like crazy, especially when someone is shooting video about why people should like her. Although so far, it's been mostly about why people shouldn't like dogs. I probably should move on to why people like dogs. Okay, let's do that. Benefits of owning a dog. First, the super practical stuff. One, various utilities. Gas, water, electric. No. They assist the blind, help the drug cops, sniff out illness. They can detect low blood sugar, oncoming seizures, and certain cancers. And there's evidence that they might be able to detect coronavirus. They can be your security system, help with hunting. In some places, dogs are used as lifeguards. Riley here from Boston's Museum of Fine Arts detects pests like moths and beetles to keep them from damaging art. Work. Conservation canines at the University of Washington sniff out poop from endangered animals to help researchers. I'm glad it's not my job to sniff out shirt. Sure. I just put it on YouTube. <laughs> and one more thing, all the other uses I didn't mention. There, that should cover it. Two, they're little companionship machines. Why did you want to have a dog? I think I had the pandemic lonelies. I don't know. Companionship. The dog's a good companion. I was working at night and your mom was working during the day and I needed somebody to be there when I got up, go for a walk. It kept me company as yeah. well at night. I lived out on a farm and I didn't have many friends, so I had dogs. They would run around with me outside and sometimes attack me, but you know, that's the price you pay for companionship. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Someone that lives with me that is always up for basically whatever I want to do. Work in the yard, she wants to help. If I feel like going for a stroll, I'm not gonna say that other word. I know what stroll means and now I'm upset. She's up for a stroll. They're just so happy to see everybody all the time. They just cuddle with you. How soft their fur is. I like how much your hair is soft. <laughs> My hair is soft. Dogs love you unconditionally. You can talk to them. That is really nice. You know, she's not going to judge me. She doesn't care. It's nice to have someone around to talk to, especially someone who's not going to talk back. Because when you talk to me, I'm always saying things back to you. Yeah. You know? I <laughs> oh, hey. There's a dog over there. <laughs> oh, hush. Bird. Thank you for the good B-roll, Birdie. <laughs> Thank you for the good bark roll. It's the pet who just loves to see you every time. I'm pretty comfortable with myself as a lovable person though, so I don't need something to reaffirm that. that. I feel the same way. I know I'm really lovable. Although, is it that I'm lovable or just that I think I'm lovable? I'm talking to you from the outside, Craig, and you're just like, you're lovable. Oh, thank you. Three, health benefits, question mark? I mean, there's the obvious benefit a dog forces me to get up and walk her all the time. Plus the added benefit of the violent recoil every time I see the amount that she pooped. Yes, that's a lot of poop. Seriously, it's amazing for a dog this size. I believe it was Nietzsche who said, it's not the size of the dog that matters, fecal matters. But also mental health. You know, you hear how good they are for like anxiety. <laughs> As with many people have been suffering a lot from heightened anxiety and you... other various mental health accoutrements. And do you find that that has helped? Not really. No. When we first got her, Ada, our daughter, was like terrified of her, even though she was the calmest dog the yeah. laziest dog ever. So that just like added to my stress and anxiety. But don't worry too much. Yeah. That's gotten so much better now. So that's yeah. not a big deal. And I do feel a calming sense when I pet Birdie. Apparently oxytocin happens. Studies have shown that there is an increase in the hormone oxytocin, which is linked to positive mental states. Interestingly, oxytocin plays a large role in forming bonds between parents and children, which leads to the theory that the reason we love dogs so much is that they hijacked this bond in their evolution. For instance, apparently puppy dog eyes are only used for humans and not other dogs. That's probably how they earned our love so they could get our food and our protection and live in our house. And eventually they'll probably run our government. Oh, how could you not vote for that? So that's probably actually the biggest reason why we love dogs. They evolutionarily tricked us into thinking that they are our children. So that's the answer. But also, they're funny. Some of them can be very entertaining. I love narrating them. How you doing, Ida? I just have some grass, man. Is it good? It's not an eagle in the state, but you know, hopefully. Hopefully someday.
that's good. Good talk. Thanks for having ni- me. It was nice to meet you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You too. Okay. So that's the list. Did I answer the ultimate question? Is it worth it to give up your freedom to physically and financially maintain a mobile poop and pee factory? The answer is no. I didn't answer that question. But my takeaway is this. Love is complicated and a lot of work and sacrifice. And it's impossible to measure the work reward balance. Probably because it's impossible to measure the reward. How do you measure love? But I think as long as you truly love something, any amount of work is worth it. Unless what you truly love is doing no work. Then I don't think a pet is for you. Come on, we all knew I wasn't really gonna end up answering the question. And that's what I do. I come up with a stupid question and then I complicate things in an attempt to answer it and then I fail. But I have fun doing it and I hope you did too. Now to clear up some loose ends, one thing I know we're all concerned about. Can you bark like a dog? This is the best interview I've ever done. Okay, glad we cleared that up. Another thing. When you grow up, will you have dogs and cats? No. Yeah. <laughs> no? Well, will I? Yeah, will you? Will I get I don't know, that's up to you. And now, I feel our love for Birdie wasn't properly represented so far. She's People are gonna that. feel bad for Birdie. They shouldn't. She is very, very well taken care of. Yes, she is. I love her. She loves us, and we yeah. love her, and she's a very good girl. Look at her tail wag. I love how her tail wags whenever you talk to her. Are you a good girl? You a good girl, Birdie? Are you a good girl? You a good girl? She Birdie. is. <laughs> she really is a really good dog. She is a better dog than Mitzi. Oh yeah, she's much <laughs> she, more well-behaved than Mitzi. She's so much more well-behaved than Mitzi. And now, completely unrelated, to conclude the epic saga that has been going on this entire year. Congratulations on working out your terrible, terrible marital difficulties. Yeah, it was bad. I was in the basement. Flashback. If you recall, I instigated divorce because everything's a joke to you. Huh. good one. But now I've grown bored with sowing my wild oats and ready to return to domesticated oats. I eat all the oatmeal. But if I'm gonna take you back, you have to joke less. Oh, I just thought of a humdinger, but I didn't say it. We're in less joke city now, baby. Excellent. This power trip is very, very pleasing. Mayhaps there be other sweet, sweet nectar I might mooch from this deal, pray tell. You? can spend a larger portion of our retirement money than me. Done. Get upstairs, honey bunch. Bunches of oats. The cereal. I just ate a lot of oatmeal. Get it? Whew. Feels good to be over that. One last thing. I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, Wondrium. They take the E out of wonder, making Wondra. Because satisfying your curiosity, it shouldn't be scary. With Wondrium, it's Fundrium! They're the premier entertaining and educational video subscription service that enriches your overall life experiences with approachable, comprehensive, and illuminating content. It's a museum for your mind, an institution for your imagination, an arboretum for your large cerebrum, a bathhouse for your math clout that you will gain from learning math. You heard me talk about the Great Courses Plus before. Well, now they're called Wondrium, where you can find all their tried and true content and more. So if your friend is like, hey, let's go check out the Great Courses Plus, you can be like, no, dingus, it's called Wondrium now. Oh, we used to be great friends, and now we're Wondra friends. Speaking of dogs, you can learn dog training right there on Wondrium, or learn all about white wolves, what I like to call nature's dogs. They got short form videos, long form videos, tutorials, how to's, travelogues, documentaries. I found this course called Sci. Fi, science fiction as philosophy, which is exactly what I'm interested in because it's talking about movies and applying philosophy to them. I'm a bit of a cinephile and I'm a bit of a philophile. And a falafelphile. I like falafels a lot too. In one episode of Sci-Fi, the professor talks about the Matrix and how it's like the ultimate epistemological movie straight out of Descartes' meditations on first philosophy. He brings up the brain in a vat problem, which proposes basically what if your brain is just floating in a vat with computers feeding you this reality. It seems like it's impossible to prove that that's not true. Mind blown, or maybe just in a vat. If your vat brain would like to learn all of these things, well, you've come to the wrong place, actually, but I'll put a link to the place where you should go. And they're offering a free trial just for you. You can show your support to me by subscribing right now. Seriously, your vat brain is going to be told by computers, allegedly, you can't prove otherwise, to love this place. So click on wonderium.com slash wheezywaiter and sign up for your free trial today. And thank you for watching. If you'd like to see the video, Why Do People Like Cats? That's right there. YouTube thinks you'll like that video. And subscribe right there! And you can support Birdie on Patreon.
I was gonna go get Birdie and hold her up to the camera at the end here, but I feel like I've gone to get her a bunch of times for this video already and I don't wanna disturb her. So I'm just gonna sit here and hold myself up to the camera. Bye, mama. <laughs>